Greeks had a very similar idea, which is that all the way down are little beings. When William Blake said that insects were little men, he didn't mean that they were little men. He meant that they were little spirits, and they had a little intellectual life of their own. It's not like ours, because it, they don't have the same forms of ours. But we know that the people who live next door to us don't have a life like ours. They have a completely different apprehension of the world. They live differently to us, and they see it in different ways. And that all the way down, even down to the atom, there is a tiny consciousness, and they see their thought forms are fixed. You could say they might be extremely rigid compared to the flexibility that we have to think, but they have forms, they have a mental experience, as well as a physical body. Um, otherwise, you have the real problem of where does this spirit begin? It, you know, and where does it stop having existence? But this will emerge as we proceed with the chapter. Does all this so far make sense? Okay? All right. We've just said, in a polarized world, there are no values but those thrown up by opposition. Indeed, without the function of opposition, in all its variations, there would be no value at all. Good is divined only in the presence of evil. Man by woman, high by low, and vice versa all. And these are apparencies, time-born. They proceed from a non-dual original power. Okay, now there's a big chunk there which we've, which we've bitten off and we need to look at this. The word which I found um, fascinating here is apparencies. It means exactly the same as appearances. It comes from the same root and it is a recognized English form of, of the word. But when you look at it, it's really strange. It's strange for several functions. Um, it means in its simplest root, and we're talking about the tiny par bit in the middle, a display. Something is appearing, something is displaying itself. And it's in the, hidden in the word separation. And um, it's to do with the fact of Something that wasn't there suddenly being there. A recognition, a restoration, a reparation, reparation, and it's putting back into its appear appearing in the state. And it's to do with ordering the world. Now, appearance, and that word it also has the tied into the word apparently. In other words, what appears to be the situation now apparently is a peculiar word because it means what I can see but it implies what you can't see so we say he's rich enough apparently to afford the rent but he doesn't pay it so the apparently means that yes you can see it but it isn't really there. Do you get my meaning? Yeah. So it's one of those peculiar words which pulls in both directions. It's literally giving you a value and then rubbing it out. It's saying, it looks like this, but it can't be. So that word apparently is tied into this display. You can display things, you can actually present something which is unreal. So it has inside itself its own shadow of, of negation. Now appearances are what the world is. The world around us appears to be something. And what is being suggested here is when the great unmanifest, the thing which is behind everything, the unity moves and appears to us, we only see a form which is created by opposition, pulling or pushing together the thing behind it, the unity, we can't see, apparently. Okay? So it's using this peculiar cunning word which says, yes, there's something there, rub it out. Yes, there's something there, rub it out. And it's suggesting that what we're looking at, what we're seeing, is suggestive of something else. 
Now, that's a, a, this is the concept of Advaita. The fact that the universe, or the big thing prior to the universe, can't make anything without pushing and pulling, so it always appears as two in opposition. The unity is the thing which is apparently the behind the opposition. Mm. Okay? Mm. Right. I'm seeing nods. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Not do you swallow the idea, which is it's quite a complex idea, but it, you do understand. Yeah? Okay. So that way the. Can you let us start? Because if you just take par, yeah. it also means putting things on a level. Yes. Doesn't yeah, on a par. Yeah, on a standard, if you like. Yeah. On what is being, you know, <coughs> what can be achieved. <coughs> yeah. And the word separation is interesting because it's to do with literally putting something. The par bit in that is, is to is to displace is to displace something which is being pulled apart. Uh, apart again, that word par coming in, and the a part is depreciated. It's saying not together, um, but you know, when you see that something has been separated, you know that it has a form of togetherness. Mm -hmm. So what the appearance that you're seeing is suggestive of something which you can't see, which is the fact that it was at one time a unity. So it's another one of those words which is suggestive of something which is not appearing. It's, it's denying the appearance function, but suggesting that you can intuit it from what you've got in front of you. Mm. Yeah. So, yes, it's a very complex idea. Because it's suggestive that this simple form, and this is a form of language, this came out of uh, intermittent English from Old French, that the, the very concept of appearance was meditated on for some time. That, in other words, what we're seeing is really quite a complex function of appearance. There's something behind it which is not manifest, which we know is going on, by the very fact of what it is we're seeing and the nature of the way it changes, mm. fluxes from moment to moment, and over a period of time will ultimately disappear back to where it came from. Mm. So the form, if you like, the shape which is held in tension, this thing here, the shape, the definition or whatever, is momentarily held as that thing, but it will change. So everything is apparent. It's an appearance suggested that it's come from the no place and it'll go back to the no place when you're not looking. Pure Plato. Absolutely. Yes, the form. Yeah. Use the word I, I don't know have I got it wrong, Advaita. 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 Non dualism. <coughs> That's all it means. It means literally that concept which which is quite quite complex to get hold of, that when the unmanifest creates, it cannot create a singularity. It has to get, create a duality. Whether this, I mean, an, an, an awful lot of scientists would say this is the nature of the human mind, and a lot of philosophers would say this too, that we have a human mind that always creates a watershed. It will always divide something into two whenever it looks at something. To be able to describe it, it creates a comparison. So it's a watershed. Let's see, imagine like a roof. And rain, which is rain, falls either on this side or on that side. So we've divided something and say, well, this rain over here is a slightly different color to that rain over there. And we can compare them. But we know, really, it was a, it was a gradation. And that the roof has created the, the differentiation. Now, our minds create differentiation wherever they look in the world. They see, they see form and function. They see energy and matter. You know, wherever you look, you can find the distinct separation. And that distinct separation is the way we talk about a unity which is suchness. The Buddha said, he called it suchness. You know, it's, it's that stuff out there. Because <laughs> no. as soon as you start talking, you're dividing the damn thing again. And you can get very highfalutin into really complex definitions and, and divisions of something. But ultimately, when you want to get back to what you're talking about, it's suchness, it's stuff. Manifestation. Manifestation is the same word as display, made fast in the world, presented to you. Appearance, display, presentation. It's a show. It's a play. Uh, sorry.